when I first heard that there was an olive undertone, I was like, oh yeah, that's me. It's just so intuitive. I've looked ghastly, dead, and sickly my whole life. Today I want to talk about colors. I'm going to explain a few schools of thought that are out there, at least on the interwebs, on YouTube. There's a lot of discussion about warm and cool tones, but I'm also going to go into a section where I talk about intuition. And I think all of that put together is going to be our personal color code, our personal palette, and it is only for you to define. I'm not here to tell you what you can or cannot wear, but I am advocating for intentionality in all that you do. And actually, when we take back that decision-making ability, we are as liberated as possible to shop or dress or what have you in a way that suits us. I did want to say that across all of these color systems, I've recognized that they have been generated and created for mainly Caucasian women. And, and most of them have just the most rudimentary understanding of Asian skin tones. I identify as someone with quite an olive base to my skin, and so it's not readily apparent that I'm extremely golden warm or that I'm like icy, you know, rosy cool. I was looking around all over the internet for answers. I left more confused than I started. So again, this stuff is not a science. Please do not roast me in the comments. Okay, one more thing. I also wanted to say that uh, all of this color theory hoo-ha Wearing the right colors can bring out your smile, it can make your eyes glisten, it can make you look alert, and that's super good. It's great, but it does not make you kinder, it does not make you wiser, and it's not going to make you happier. Only you can acknowledge your own truth, which is that you are beautiful, you are worthy, and you are enough. Okay, I just wanted to fend off the bullies. Now we can dive into things. Step one, I have gathered you all here today to discuss something very important. As an Asian American woman, as are you, or maybe not American, maybe not Asian, that's okay, but this is a video for olive toned people and us olives get a real bad. If you'd like to quickly confirm that you're an olive, what you can do is use the vein test. It's super popular in natural lighting, so this is not gonna work. Check out your wrist color. If it's bluish, then you can count yourself as a cool toned. If it's greenish, tealish even, um, then you are a warm toned. So my, my veins are super blue, but when you get down to my elbow, you can see the teal. Basically, an olive-toned person is going to experience this existential vein confusion because either your veins are like mine and they're blue and green, or you just can't tell, it's really in the middle. An olive undertone just means that you have a mix. You have a mix of the bluish uh, tint to your skin, but you also have a lot of yellow to your skin. Blue and yellow come together to make green or olive. I don't know what it is, it just felt like a little alien my whole life. Here we are, a little alien family. You can tell rather easily if you're an olive tone in photos side by side with other people. I'm gonna pull up some photos right here. My cousin on the left, she's clearly a warm undertone. She grows only more golden as she tans, and yeah, it's just super beautiful and lucky. My friend on the right, I think she leans cool. Something about her neutral or maybe cool undertones allows her to, you know, pull off that cool blonde hairdo. So I would say that their undertones are apparent and not olive. Whereas the most sickly looking person in the center there, it's possibly exacerbated by my olive green shirt, but nonetheless, I think you can see that my highlights are yellow, but my hollows are greenish. Combined with some of my natural pinkness too, I mean the olive undertone is a hot mess. Here I am with some work friends, and this is not my best photo at all. 
but it's such a great example of how green I look next to naturally warm people. So the thing about being olive is that not only do your greens come through, but your reds and your pinkness comes through too. I think this is because green and red are opposites on the color wheel, and so they just play with each other really well. One brings out the other, and um, unfortunately that's happening on my face. <laughs> oh, this is me and my friend. You don't know her. Her name is Maggie Q. I can't quite pinpoint her as a warm or a cool, but you can clearly see in this photo that she is warmer than I am. And again, she enjoys so much more evenness in her tone, while my olive undertone is just uplifting all sorts of hues. All right, that's enough olive bashing. I hope you can see that the olive undertone really sits in between the warm and the cool undertones. On the left side of the photo, she has a yellow cast that indicates her warm undertones. And then my friend uh, on the right side of the photo has a reddish cast. And so that indicates his cool undertones. You can see that I'm just the kind of neutral arbiter in the middle. Okay, so you're an olive. Now as a reminder, I don't advise you to engage in this activity if you're drawn to quote unquote right answers or definitive categories of what you are or aren't. Let's see what colors or palettes make us more visible and then from there, choose how we're gonna strategize to use those colors to suit our natural exuberance or, you know, when we're gonna straight up break the rules. As I've mentioned, I've voraciously consumed this topic, and so here's a quick regurgitation of what I've learned. The seasonal color analysis is popular because it has an element of realisticness to it. So first of all, are you cool or warm? Once again, your undertones are gonna play a large role into categorizing you into one of two seasons. The warms are spring and autumn, and then the cools are summer and winter. Now, are you high contrast or low contrast? Meaning your hair and eyes, do they stand apart from your skin color or is everything kind of a similar shade of, you know, beige, beige and blonde or tan and brown? So if you're high contrast, then you're gonna fit into winter or spring. And if you're low contrast, then that's the summer or autumn. It's a really rudimentary way for you to categorize yourself into one of these seasons. And now, it gets more complicated. Each season has three different subcategories, and so I'm a winter, and within that, I'm what's called a deep winter. The seasonal color analysis prescribes a rigid color palette that will never fail you. So it's kind of cool if you really want to dive into it and get specific and get assigned, you will be assigned a color palette and you can use that as a guide when you're shopping or dressing. And I certainly am a bit inspired by some of the new colors I see and I'm excited to try them on. But at its worst, it's not intuitive. It's so verbose and just confusing the more you look into it. And so proceed with caution. The artistic license color system is something you can find a lot of videos on on YouTube. It's super simple and I do like the straightforward line of reasoning. Are you warm or cool? And within those colors, are you enhanced by the bright version of those colors or the delicate or softer tones within those colors? You can see here a warm and bright yellow as opposed to a warm but delicate yellow and then the cool and bright blue is gonna suit some while the cool but delicate blue suits others. And yellow and blue are traditional indicators of warm versus cool. So one of these four blobs might speak to you and that is gonna lead you into the direction of the artistic license color system Using these systems, I didn't really get a great sense of any matches. I earnestly tried them, I just didn't really feel totally comfortable with how prescriptive it all was. Alright, so my solution includes just going out there and seeing for yourself. I embraced a self-assessment led by my intuition because I genuinely think this stuff is way too subjective to turn into a Punnett square or even go along just one spectrum. First of all, assuming you are olive-toned, do you think you are warmer or cooler? 
Are you a rosy, blushing type? Then try some cool shades of blue or purple more often. Are you a gold jewelry fiend who gets a golden tan? Well, let the color ivory really pull out your goldenness rather than an optic white, which would kind of fight against it. What colors look right to you, just instinctively? Does maroon look good on you? That's a very warm color. Does fuchsia look good on you? That's cooler. Think about the messages that have made you smile. This one helped me a lot actually because, you know, I've been complimented on my smile many times and sometimes with an added note on how white my teeth appear. James also compliments me on the whites of my eyes, which is so weird and I'm worried he only likes me for my eye whites. But apparently there's some sort of brightness to my face and appearance and I do think that the cooler tones are bringing that out. I've also been complimented most on cool toned clothing and my mom thinks that I just look really good in scarlet. I've never been able to explain why. I include some questions here that are more in the territory of personal style. So are you going for a slouchy look or like a very prim and proper refined look? Slouchy might mean that you enjoy shopping at free people or anthropology. Refined is more of the Banana Republic and smart business casual look. Sometimes our personal style dictates bold colors and others muted colors. Screw what the systems poop out. If you're demure or shy or you're just low key and chillin and you like dusty pinks and olive greens, just go for it. If you like to be edgier with bold prints or clear black and white, metallic colors, you know, if off-white is just a gross color to you, <laughs> then go for that. Our skin tones may suggest one thing, but our personal style is an art that we should not compromise. Similarly, this is a question on mannerism. Do you like for your hair and clothing to cover you up or to reveal you? And although most style gurus are gonna attempt to make you shine and exuberant, I think there is a place for your personal style to tell people, hey, fuck off. <laughs> Let me just put it this way. I'm realizing that certain bright colors actually look amazing on me. And on some level, I've always known that, but I'm still hesitating because I think that they would precisely make me pop. And I'm not sure I wanna pop most of the time. So I'm at home with a lot of muted colors and even though my very best color might not be muted, I think you'll catch me in a lot of muted tones because I want to portray a little bit more humility and kind of receding into the crowd. And finally, what do you wear? What do you tend to wear? What color is your favorite shirt? That's gonna tell you so much. So for example, my favorite shirt, hands down, it's this navy blue, very cool, toned t-shirt. I love it. I've never been able to explain why, but now I think I can safely say that as an olive toned person, I lean cool and navy blue looks great on me. I feel great in it and that's why it's the color for me. All right, in this final part of the video, what I want to show you is just a really quick and dirty way to see what works for you. And what I did was I pulled some photos of myself and using photoscissors.com, I pulled apart two photos of myself and then I lined them side by side on Canva. So I'll walk you through that in case you are really interested in doing this. On Canva, you can create a background of all one color. Click on the little color box to change it and you can click new color to have the full color spectrum. There's the bar where you can move from red to orange, yellow, green, teal, blue, indigo, purple, back to red. Take note of also the uh, large rectangle where you can drag the circle anywhere in there to pick a specific sort of tint within that color. So. I drag the marker to the top right corner, the very top, very right corner, because this is going to represent the brightest version of that color. As I drag across the color spectrum, I go from bright red to bright orange to bright yellow and so on. And I can see that I am looking 
really rough in a lot of these bright colors I think I don't think I'm too suited for bright colors but I think my if I had to pick um, a hot pink is okay and a royal blue um, but as light as possible still so periwinkle I suppose or I'm not sure what that color blue is leading into the teal territory I think that looks okay if I had to wear a really bright color and next you can pull your pointer um, over to a zone that is closer to the left but still up along the top that's going to represent the pastel color range and I drag my pointer to go from like a dusty pink or I'd say a, a baby pink over to kind of creamsicle orange baby yellow man in the 90s I would collect gel pens and these would be colors to die for I don't know if any of you are about my age range but gel pens and baby colors baby blue baby pink baby yellow baby anything they were just like all the rage so again some of my favorite colors on me here are falling into the blue category i think there's this really lovely sky blue that i really like against my skin and i'm particularly looking at the scrubby lisa the one who just woke up and has no makeup on Moving on, you can take the pointer closer to the center. That's where you're going to find uh, black and white meat to introduce a lot of gray into whatever color you are on. And so we drag the pointer across to go from like a dusty rose over to some camels, some coffees, um, olive tones, teal, steel blue, I'm running out of colors. I don't know all these colors. Um, but over to a mauve and back to the dusty rose. So I personally love this palette of colors. But uh, if we drag over to olive green, for once in my life, I think I'm beginning to see that olive green does not in fact work for me. That I have olive green in my skin and there's no need for me to wear a color that brings out the olive in my skin. And so I would actually flip the spectrum and go kind of equidistant to the other side of the spectrum to meet a sort of um, eggplant color. And I think that actually looks really good on my skin. Of course, I'm just playing with the colors here, but steel blue uh, remains beautiful in my eyes and mauve as well as dusty pink I like as well. And then lastly, I go into the, the deep colors. So these are the prominent, heavy, and deep versions of those original bright colors. And we drag the pointer across the spectrum to go from just the richest tones that these colors have to offer and again we have some browns leading into some really earthy greens bottle green and beautiful blues kind of like a deep sea blue and then I think this is technically where eggplant is and um, just dark you know blood red and I personally think that I am really suited for these deep colors. I think deep colors really work on my skin because on the one hand, um, my fair skin is juxtaposed against my dark eyes and hair. And so deep, rich, vibrant colors are just kind of tying it all together. Well, thanks so much for watching. I had too much fun filming this video way too much fun. Long story short, I'm super glad that I looked into personal color analysis because it has really deepened my own self-awareness. It has also opened my mind and opened my eyes to colors that I had previously written off. So as you can see, it's actually broadened my sense of what I can wear and there are colors that perhaps I should never wear, but your girl does not own any fluorescent green clothing because all of this is somewhat 
intuitive and so i hope that this video is a nice foray into like how people tend to categorize colors it took days of research that i willingly did on youtube in bed i also saw this meme on instagram that was like like an aries way of coping with filling the void is to completely revamp their wardrobe and all i have to say i'm triggered my last thing is to just remind you that you are so beautiful. I mean, that top you have on right now, just mwah. You're absolutely enough just the way you are. You don't have to put on pants. You don't have to put on the right color. This is just cherry on top. This is just extra. This is just because we're in quarantine and we don't have anything better to do. You know what I mean? And with that, please give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel. Share the video with a friend, maybe another olive tone friend. That'd be cool. Bye bye. There's an airplane flying overhead. Cause I live next to the airport. Why do I live next to the airport? <laughs>